as we sailed into the state of Queensland. It felt as if we had crossed the finish line to a monster month long marathon. We had put everything on the line to get to this point. First, quitting my job, spending our savings on a new yacht, Takana, and then sailing it from Melbourne to the Gold Coast in just four weeks. It was an enormous task for two amateur sailors. And to be honest, it was a miracle we had even managed to get so far with this COVID outbreak shutting down Australian state borders. So just how long could this good luck of ours last for? We're usually trying to stay clear of marinas because of the expense, but our steering cables need replacing urgently. So we've pulled into Boatworks on the Gold Coast. This place seriously goes on and on. It is like a theme park for boaties. It's the largest shipyard in the Southern Hemisphere. There are so many laundry facilities through here and en suite. So showers, bathrooms, air conditioned rooms, car hires available. These are all included in the cost of $70 a night. As soon as we arrived, we hired one of their complimentary cars and hit the ground running. We had only been in the state for four hours when the phone rang. So we just had a call. Maritime Safety Queensland have showed up. It's because we came in from New South Wales. They're looking for a little Greek lady. <laughs> <laughs> About yay hi. This is how the phone call went down. Um, chasing up your little vessel of yours, I came into um, Cooper River today. Yeah. Uh, um, yours is the bus earlier. So uh, mate, you've got to uh, get up early. It's an uh, early start. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no we, we'll, we'll be back in 16 minutes, the GPS is saying. Will you be around for a bit? Mate, we can sit here. Yeah, that way we can chat face to face. Um, you guys have got all your water declarations. Yeah, and, and I, I messaged all the details, emailed the details to Paul um, at MSQ Arrivals. I'll just screenshot your, your um, water declarations if you're happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be out of here as quick as I can. Sure, no, that's no worries, mate. John then came up with an idea. Maybe while I'm driving back, I can get my partner to just go through my phone and send those, like, email those on to you now, um, just to save a bit of time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, he seemed friendly. Yeah. And so we re-emailed them all our documentation we had sent authorities days ago before we had even entered the state. I, I even told them that we'd be at the boat works. So it just goes to show you that they're checking pretty much every single person that comes through into the state. Maybe. From New South Wales. John's a bit nervous. No, I'm not. I'm we spent a full 14 days isolated away from Sydney and today is the 15th day. So there's no denying that we have done the right thing. Mm. And so access was granted. We felt like we had had some sort of Stephen Bradbury win. John celebrated by treating himself to those new steering cables. And I... I haven't had my hair done since January. I'm so sorry. I have been wearing a beanie, as you guys know, for like two days straight. <laughs> and Nikki has to work with this. You didn't even say anything about my hair. Do you like it? Right. White is the only colour of pink. What do you guys think? Should I go pink? Anyway, let us know. For now, Takana needs a transformation herself. The rego stickers are embarrassing and her backside has been bare ever since John got carried away polishing her while on the hard stand a few weeks back and removed her name. Get stuff done. Naughty. So this morning I designed and purchased some new decals so other bodies can recognize her and her rego clearly in case we're in an emergency, they at least will know her name and details. But as I found out, there's an art to the application process. 
What we're gonna do with this decal is stick these two pieces on the side of the boat. Then line up the sticker where you want it. I feel like if I don't get this straight, every time we walk past the boat, we're gonna hate it. Tape the top edge and then using scissors, cut along each character. Just remember to breathe. I'm now feeling the back of the sticker. Oh, like that. Voila, straight characters, just how they appear horizontally on the sticker. Looks really good. Does it? Yeah. You come over here and say it in front of the camera. It looks really good. <laughs> Can you believe they wanted $150 to do this? It's ridiculous. We pretty much just what? made money. I think you should pay me $150 for doing this. Not all the work I was doing while you're getting your hair done. So we're just trying to get the Takana decals perfect here on the back of the boat. But the problem is we can't get a perspective because there's nothing behind us. So John's just running over to the other pontoon to see what it looks like. That looks good, just pick it up. She has her name back. Takana. I think we need to address the elephant in the room. Did you really talk about yourself like that? <laughs> Show us your fingers, John. What? No, your other hand. Shouldn't use shifters to tighten up nuts. Should use spanners. While John was working on the steering system, his hand slipped. It was so gory. Look away if you have a soft stomach in three, two, one. So tell us what happened and how many stitches did you need to get? Uh, five stitches. I don't need to clean my nails. <laughs> was it painful? No, not really. They put out a setting there. So it was all right. And how did I do as a nurse? Very well. I was horrible. I almost fainted. I actually had to sit right there with my legs up in the air because I felt like I was going to be sick. Showering's gonna be difficult tonight. Oh, you got a light for the bathroom. Can you just stop? You've injured yourself. Let's not, just not do boat work for a day or two. It's, um, <laughs> you can't help yourself. This is not a waterproof one, but I figure no, you can see how long it lasts. Because there's nothing else with a switch, it's a touch one. You are a workaholic. Close your eyes. But he did it. Our steering was fixed and it was time to keep etching north. We can't wait to take Takana to the Great Barrier Reef. But first we have to get out of this marina. So I think the main channel, the deepest way people are telling us is to take the W out towards Redland Bay. Around Are we concerned to, that we'll hit the bottom at all? Yeah, you know, that's why we're trying to time it for high tide. So our options are we leave tonight and arrive on the highest of the high tides at Jacob's Well or we leave in the morning and arrive on a 1.4 metre high tide. And there's no moon tonight either? No. I think we should go tonight. It's also two hours less sailing we have to do tomorrow to get north because one, if we go tonight, we don't have to pay another night's accommodation here at Boat Works, which is $70. Two, the tide is higher than what it will be tomorrow morning, which is better because obviously last night we only had 10 centimetres under the kill and we've never done any night sort of passages like that before, so it would be a good experience. Well, if we're going to go tonight, we yep. need to film more, have not packed the main away. We've got three hours, right? Yep. Three hours. It was time to get cracking. Time was ticking, so priorities. Every time we have a free washing machine to use, these marinas it's like let's wash everything so i'm about to have my last shower here before we go i'm the cool kid from the party i'm the one calling all the shots so tonight we're leaving Boatworks for Jacob's Well. We have to navigate our way through the broad water. Otherwise, we'll never get out of here with our 2.2 metre draft. So that's the worst part that we got well, through. for today. We bloody did it though.
Takana looked more like a laundry the next morning, but we made it. The washing never had time to dry. Breakfast is served. We woke up to the anchor alarm. Anchor alarm was because I set it really small, like a small radius. We didn't drag. It was the first time that we ever put the anchor down on Takana by ourselves. And we are going to lift the anchor for the first time as well. I'll also need a quick crash course because I've never done this before. I guess I should probably wear shoes if I'm putting the anchor up, hey. When the anchor is at the water level, like just in the water, stop there so that it's not swinging, so okay, it's directly yeah. down. Yeah. John also showed me how to use the deck wash. So if there's mud on the anchor, we can wash it off. You gotta push that in, pull it out. This is a fresh water switch. one point where the anchor was sort of up against the boat and I didn't know that's when John was like how's the anchor going and I looked down and it was against the fiberglass so we'll have to have a little sneaky look at that later but this is a learning experience this is the first time that I've ever done it by myself so next time I'll be a little bit more observant it's a little overwhelming sometimes learning all these new things, but you never stop learning, do you? Not far from Peel Island, just around the top of Maclay. The very spot we first jumped on a friend's trailer sailor around six years ago. Who would have thought we'd one day have our own and actually learn the ropes ourselves? See, tensioning that one, that one pulls it up. I wonder how much speed we'll get from this. Dead downwind. This is called wing on wind. Is it? Yeah. Have you ever done this before? No, never. <laughs> we wanted some advice, so who better to ask than our rigger and respected veteran ocean racer, Ian Barney Walker, who's competed in three Volvo round the world yacht races. Hey Barn, does it look right to you mate? It's the first time I've uh, ever done it. Should I have something that goes forward of the pole or, or is that all right like that? I'll come up and show you. I don't even know if I'm allowed to be up here, Barnes. I gonna get, we've got a preventer, so I should be okay. But yeah, it's on this lifeline, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, what do you think? We then found an issue with the spinnaker pole. What do you mean? See the rivets are missing? There's one rivet there and one rivet on the top that are missing. That could just slide out that way. Oh, that's not great. Okay, well, I want to go back in case one of us falls off and then there's only one of us here and then I'll fall in and then no one will be at the helm and then the boat will just sail into the sunset without us. In Morden Bay, we're very much protected from the roaring sea. Yeah, so at the moment it's showing just on the eastern side of um, Morton Island there. It's showing two to three metres and then a little further out, three to five metres swell. Which is why we took the inside route. I cannot believe it's three to five metres swell right now. I think it's better to be in here. <laughs> this was the way to go. Tonight we're anchoring off Bribie Island, north of Brisbane, home to around 20,000 people, many national parks and surf beaches. 
way there, we found ourselves in a sticky situation with another vessel. I just don't feel comfortable about this. A potential collision course scenario. Yeah, so he's on a port tack. We're just waiting because we think we have right of way. Almost about to make this person's face out, I think. Yeah, they're definitely looking at us, John. This is a little bit awkward and embarrassing. We, oh my God, we're getting so close. It's ridiculous. Sorry, mate, I'm busy looking up the rules. <laughs> Are you actually? We actually were looking up the rules and as it turned out, as John had assured me earlier, we were the stand-on vessel. Do you reckon they can hear me if I screamed and say beautiful boat? If you're watching, you have a beautiful boat. You have to follow the rules so then you know what each other's doing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If the stand-on vessel gives way, it gets confusing. It's kind of like when I'm driving the car and I let someone go in front of me when there's no give. Right away. When I have right of way, they you... don't know whether to go or not. They don't. They hesitate. So then, after you waving them through, they hesitate because they know that you've got right away. I'm just trying no to be not. Yeah, but I'm just trying to be a nice person. Yeah, I know. And you are a nice person. Irrespective of the anti-collision rules, at the end of the day, it's a joint responsibility to avoid a collision. Look ahead, the sea is calm And I know we've been through a lot But just wait mm, Wait for better days to come And carry us like wind in our sails Coming up next week We finally hook a fish But I really stuffed up Oh no! It's and it's a fault. big bloody it's fish! Okay, that was a bloody disaster before we start exploring some breathtaking spots up the Queensland coast. I was about to say, you were wearing the same clothes as yesterday, but then I'd be a hypocrite because I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday. We are dreamers of the...